a rugby match in Johannesburg. I remember the sound of my neck breaking. It's a very distinct sound. Leaves a student in a wheelchair. I partly felt responsible for him because I would obviously have to phone his mom and his dad. This week, Anthony Kasarivus rode to recovery and his growing career in music production. A rugby accident in 2008 ended a young man's promising sporting career. Anthony Kasarivu broke his neck while logging heads with players of the opposing team. Now in a wheelchair, the Northwest resident had to do whatever he could to lift himself up. In less than five years, Anthony turned things around, becoming a music producer and engineer whose work is appreciated internationally. From an early age, he displayed impressive abilities on the field of play. I used to play cricket in my primary school years. I wasn't really a soccer guy, I had two left feet. Um, the only thing I could really do in soccer was cross the ball. Like, I could cross it to your head. Anthony Kasarivu could switch from one sport to another with ease. And when he moved to this school, Punch Boys High, in 2002, he found his passion. That's when I first discovered rugby. By that time, I was quite hefty. I was quite a fat guy. So when I saw the rugby players, most of them were lean and muscular. So I thought to myself, I want that. Anthony furthered his studies with the University of Johannesburg, where he continued to play rugby. And his talent quickly impressed his coach, giving him a chance to join a res team known as Bastion. He'd always be there for, for Bastion. Um, played in the front row, if I'm correct, he was hooker for, for us. Um, back in the day, and Rust Bastion's had a very proud tradition of, of being a really strong rugby, uh, rugby res. By 2008, Anthony had become a regular starter for Bastion. Later that year, he featured in a crucial encounter against his team's bitter rivals. It was the residence rugby match. It was one of our big rivals, um, Bastion versus, versus Romodaris. It was a night in August, I'll never forget, 2008. <laughs> It was a scrum, um, and I'm not a rugby aficionado, but something went wrong. And we sat for the scrum. And I remember looking at the faces of the guys who were about to scrum against. I knew something was going to happen. I don't know, I don't know how, but I had no idea what. A bone-crushing log ahead that ended a young man's promising career. I remember the sound of my neck breaking. It's a very distinct sound. And I remember standing the last time I stood on my own. Because when the break happened, I still had enough mobility to stand and fall on my back. I tell you, it was a very, very emotional time for me. Um, but when he went down, you know, <clears throat> I thought, well, there's one of my boys. There's one of my boys lying, lying on the rugby field. And I partly felt responsible for him because I would obviously have to phone his mom and his dad and, and, and tell them of, of, of what transpired. 
In no time, Anthony had been lying in bed at this hospital in Joburg, fighting for his life. All I can remember distinctly was, I just kept hearing, I don't want to call it a, a voice, but it was just this thing in me that kept saying, don't give up. And they put me into the wheelchair for the first time. At that time, I was wearing a neck brace and no movement. I remember the one time they put me outside and they left me outside, like, just to, like, get some fresh air. I remember that was the first time I tried to move my legs or my arm. Nothing. After nearly a year at the rehabilitation center, Anthony embarked on a long journey to recovery. Not being able to move was, was a shock to the system because I was the solid thing, you know, I was like built like a rock. And then suddenly you can't move your finger. Anthony desperately needed a strong support system. I even had to retire a bit early because I couldn't manage to give my all at the work and my all at home. So I rather said, let me phase off the work and phase in my all at home. So that's why now I'm in retirement, I'm a pensioner and the life moves on. Anthony's accident not only ended his dream of playing rugby at an international level, but it destabilized his family. He had to abandon his studies, not knowing if he would ever be able to continue. After the break, how is it possible for Anthony Kasarivu to begin a new career and return to university?